Hello and welcome to another hopefully helpful video. This one's about a very underrated consideration on the bike I think, which is gearing. Now there's plenty of videos about having the right gears for your bike. A lot of these are done by seasoned and quite strong riders and may not necessarily apply to the average Joe or a guy or gal who's just got themselves a bike and finds themselves struggling, especially looking at these kind of videos without a clue as to why out. This video takes a bit of an unusual view on that. Let's examine you and what you want from riding. Myself, I like to explore. Many rides I've been on, um, I've hit some very steep gradients. To be honest, most of them I expect because when I'm planning my routes, I take a look at the topographical data. I, I aim to get out a certain amount of climbing on each and everything. Sometimes it might be 600 metres of climbing, sometimes it might be 300 metres, depending on what time I've got to do. But I always take a look at the slopes and also the angles of some of these climbs as well. Sometimes I like to do long climbs of gentle gradients, sometimes I like short, sharp ones. So I take a look at those. However, that being said, sometimes I arrive at some new climbs and they look a lot steeper, longer, badly paved, or indeed sometimes even slippery. So having the right gearing at those particular moments can make all the difference to tackling it, especially when you look at it and think to yourself, that's steeper than I thought it was, but I can manage that. It's a lot better than I'm going to turn around and find another way. So, let's start by asking these questions. What kind of terrain do you seek out? Are you a strong rider? If so, do you still want to be more efficient climbing? Or, alternatively, do you just want to get up hills a little bit easier? So here's where it comes into having the gearing right. These can make managing those days where it's particularly hilly a lot more fun. Do you regard yourself as a strong rider? Well, great if you do. If not, welcome to my world. The majority of terrain that I cycle in round here, um, I live in the Biggin Hill area of Kent in the UK, is pretty hilly and my rides are usually between 30k and 60k. So there's lots of climbing to be done during them. And if you're using a stock bike, it's probably been reviewed by a magazine or road tester who does loads and loads of miles. Um, they might be an ex-professional rider, um, even if they're not, the chances are they're super fit guys. Um, the same guys who develop the bikes are very similar on these lines. Um, some of them are ex-pros, some of them aren't, but they're very, very good riders. Um, the problem being is when they spec a bike, they spec a bike as to what they think the average rider will be able to use. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the average rider is... 30 years older than them, or new to cycling, or maybe a myriad of other things, unfit, not, not quite as healthy, maybe suffering from some minor disability or so. But now, some of us ride for fitness, or me where you want to lose weight, or me where you want to be out having fun and losing weight and gaining fitness is part and parcel of the bargain that they've just struck by buying a bike. This is me, by the way. For my age and weight, I get around okay. I'll never beat Chris Froome on a climb, nor would I find the lifestyle to get that good my particular bag. But take a look at his gearing for riding. He has very easy to spin gears and a high cadence for his fitness. He also uses things like small oval chain rings and sometimes mounted bike cassettes with bigger sprockets for the climbs. Personally, I had started doing this a bit before his success. He did it for Tour de France glory. I did it because I needed to get up any kind of steep slope or long hill. And the main thing to take, for, take away from this is that it works well for both of us. So, if when out riding you run out of gears on climbs, the simplest thing that you can do is change to a larger sprocket cassette. Now, most road bikes usually come equipped with an 1128 cassette which means the big sprocket on the back is 28 teeth climbing and the small one is 11 teeth for top speed. Now, if you can change the cassette for something like a 1230 or 1130, that will help. The extra two teeth do make a difference. But once you are here, generally, you will be at the mechanical limit of what you're rear. 
essentially with the standard gearing the lowest gear every pedal stroke will take you 32 inches forward which doesn't sound like a lot but believe me when you're climbing steep hills you want to get the shortest amount of travel you can if you struggle with my gearing on my particular road bike i've changed it so i get 23 inches with every pedal stroke basically forward which means it's a lot easier to keep putting the power out when you're climbing without running into stress or difficulties with your cadence as well because it will keep your cadence higher uh, which makes it easier to travel uphill now with my custom gearing i've had to change not only um, the rear mech hanger uh, basically i've added something called a wolf tooth which fits in between the rear mech hanger and the derailleur basically it's the extender for the rear mech hanger and it drops the rear pulleys basically on the derailleur a bit further away for the bigger sprocket for more clearance I've done this on my road bike and what was a 30 tooth limit um, with playing around with the B screw that's the adjuster on the rear derailleur it is now taking a 34 tooth cassette when doing this, you've got to be aware that you might have to extend the chain. Um, I went the further with my particular bike of not only changing the chain, but also the front chain rings going smaller and those also to help with the climbing. Um, essentially, my front chain ring came with a 5034 compact um, cassette, which is great for most riding, and I was able to get up and down hills on that. But I preferred something easier and I preferred also going and tackling steeper climbs. So I went for absolute max oval chain rings um, of a 4630. Um, this, this made my giant fly basically into a bona fide mountain goat on long rides. I have the confidence that I can tackle anything slope wise. Um, you will lose a little bit of top speed. Um, you spin your legs faster if you really need to get gain that top speed. I've never found it a problem, but essentially what you're taking from the top speed you're adding on to the climbing ability. So just bear that in mind on the road bikes. Now, moving on to my Monster Cross ride. This is the bike that I take out more than anything else at the moment, to be honest. I love riding it because it I'm able to go over different terrains, not just the road, but off-road as well. Um, it's a drop bar so it's fast on road and it's quite capable off road although it's no mountain bike when you're going off road um, your weight distribution is completely different on it to a mountain bike so on some of the technical rides I've got to be really careful going downhill with it but having said that I'd be able to go downhill off road on it which is something I'd never be able to do with a road bike now the choice for the setup on gearing with that one um, I've actually gone for a 3 by setup, so it's got three chain rings at the front, which is very unfashionable these days. Um, and I'll tell you the reason why I've gone for that one. I did try it with a 2 a 2 by setup, and I've also tried it with a one by setup. But I find that the gearing with a one by setup leaves huge gaps in cadence when you're climbing, which I don't like. Um, it's fine for a mountain bike with a quick change, etc. But I've always preferred two by or three by setups and one by. Um, also, it gives you the benefit of having great top end gearing and fantastic bottom end gearing, so you get the best of every world. Whereas the one by setups are a bit of a compromise. As I said, it's the current fashion at the moment. It's not my bag. I, I've had bikes with one by setups, and I've not enjoyed them, to be honest with you. Now. The chain ring on the front of this particular bike is a 443222. Um, it's got a rear cassette, it's a 10 speed one, it's got a rear cassette of 1136. Um, this particular bike will propel me upwards basically on the, 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 the climbing gear, the best climbing gear in this one is 17.8 inches for every pedal stroke. Um, this is absolutely incredible. Um, to be perfectly honest, I've never really used the bottom gear on this bike but i've got it there as a confidence booster for myself <laughs> i've got to two cogs below that and i could change the the front ring to a 24 or 26 to make better use of that gearing but quite frankly i don't need it because i've got a middle chain ring and a top end chain ring as well so it's something that if i do need it i've got it and if i don't need it i'm carrying a little bit of extra weight for it but i could change it if i need to anyway 
This bike is heavier than the road bike and it's also used on some slippy and muddy climbs as well. And sometimes to get the extra traction you've got to remain seated and having that very low gear at the bottom will be a handy a handy booster basically if I get to particularly slippery climbs on that. Now getting the gearing correct for you is important for your confidence as I've said before and having the right tools for the job helps with that. For all you fast and strong guys out there you can also benefit from taking a look at closer ratios for clearance regulation properly. Um, you'll get more performance for it by keeping your legs turning within that performance window that you've got, i.e. your sweet spot. Anyway, I hope that's of some benefit to you, um, and hopefully I'll see some of you out on the hills fairly soon. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.